Thank you for joining me as I sit down with Pastor David and Marie Rosales from Calvary Chapel, Chino Valley, as we discuss marriage, raising children, and managing difficulties that arise in the family. We're ready to begin, so let's talk marriage. Like my, what my wife and I will do is before we will go grocery shopping or before we write a check to anything, we want to make sure we have tithed first as a like a first fruit thing rather than shop. OK, then pay our bills mm -hmm. and then tithe. Yes. Well, then we're going to then we're going to start compromising. It's like, well, we really need it this time. You know, we mm -hmm. come up a little short mm -hmm. for us. I, I believe that there is more faith in the Lord when you give first. Is that a common practice that should be at least considered? I think that's a good thing to do, yes. John. Do you have something? No, yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's a good thing to do. Uh, it's teaching you to budget. Mm -hmm. It's teaching you, like I said earlier, it's teaching you to live on 90 cents rather than 100 mm -hmm. cents. Yeah, and that's how, that's how, Marie, and I, that's mm -hmm. how Marie and I live. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, I, I live off of what has been given to me as a steward. The first thing that was entrusted to me was a hundred pennies, but um, that comes from the Lord. So to the Lord, I give back first, and then the ninety percent is left up to me to steward, and so that will include everything. That'll include what life requires in every way, whether whether we have a piece of meat this week, or whether we eat something of less. You know, maybe maybe something like it, it's some chicken or some some. Um, we need eggs. Well, that's a typical Mexican <laughs> breakfast, bro. <laughs> that's our sausage. What are you talking about, man? Oscar Mayer right. and, and, and some huevos, right? Yeah. <laughs> some tortillas. We need and eggs, man. That's good stuff. Yes, You're talking is. gourmet now, right? <laughs> I grew up with that. I think I a lot of Mexican that. kids did, yeah. you know? Yeah. No, it's, but you, you know that. I mean, you do know that. I mean, I, I've been blessed by the Lord because. I've had opportunity, I'm, I'm 70 years old, man. I've had an opportunity to, to be used by God in a lot of places and a lot of countries. And Marie, too, has had the joy and privilege, the blessing the, of traveling. Mm -hmm. You know, so we have been to places that others see on postcards. You know, mm -hmm. I have seen the Taj Mahal. We have seen the Eiffel Tower. You know, we have seen the Tower of London. We've been to the wall in Jerusalem. We've traveled the world. Mm -hmm. And and I am, sometimes we pinch ourselves. Sometimes we will, we really will. I'll say, baby, did you ever think? And I was, I was talking to Randy Walls from Calvary Upland the other day. And I was saying, you know, Randy, you remember we were at at uh, Lake Arrowhead and we were standing uh, by by some little, um, it's like a little wall, he and I, he, he remembers. Remember? And how I looked at you and I said to you, who would have ever thought that we were going to get coffee at Lake Arrowhead? Because that's kind of, mm -hmm. that was as far as my horizon went. I mean, my dad was uh, in the Navy and uh, he traveled the world and he always had this wanderlust. He really always wanted, mama didn't, but daddy wanted to go traveling. I was raised with a wanderlust, like I'd love to see Madrid. I, I would love to see, uh, you name it, you know. I would love to go to Tokyo, but I can never do that. I can never go to Hawaii. I mean, I can never do that. And and I just was very comfortable with that because you know what? My dad was a simple man, and you go to Big Bear for three days in a cabin, and you're, that's your vacation. And guess what? We were happy. We didn't know anything less, and it was okay. Then one day God opens the door and, 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 and I'm taking places and someone says, may I buy you a meal? And they buy me something called filet. I've never, I had heard of it, but didn't know what it was. I did not know what filet is. Somebody bought it and said, would you like that? But you know what, Marie and I can say, this is true. You know, we've had opportunities. We've been blessed and I'm grateful for those blessings. But if you ask my wife what my favorite meal is, it's not filet, you know. It's when she makes me some uh, some guiso. Mm -hmm. It's when she cuts up some some potatoes and some uh, bell pepper and hamburger meat and and onion, uh, mm -hmm. and just just cooks it up for me. Gets me some beans and a couple of tortillas and some salsa. I'm in heaven, you know. So that to me is a good thing, because we've had opportunities to taste 
but we don't have a drive to. And that's I got that from my dad. I got that, and she got that from her family. I think that the simple is the best. We always have. So we don't have these cravings for things. We don't. We just don't, John, because I'm content. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. I'm content. Mm -hmm. I'm content. I'm content. And so money can't buy happiness. And like those four prophets, the Beatles said, money can't buy me love. <laughs> can't so, buy me love. That's right. Would you say, would you both say that one of the common mistakes in finances in the marriage is not tithing? I believe so. Oh, absolutely. Because and selfishness too. <laughs> I mean, it says oftentimes. Say it, lady, say it. <laughs> and selfishness. Yeah, because they want to keep it to themselves. Yeah, it's, it's selfish. You're not trusting the Lord. God, God says that he will provide, and yet you don't think he will. Now, how can I preach a message to others that I don't believe myself? How can I really? How can I be effective if I know in the back of my mind that I don't trust him for these things? Mm -hmm. How can I? I really could not do that in good conscience. You have to practice what you preach. So yes, I believe that people make a huge mistake if they don't give to the Lord. Now, I don't think that each person has to give, quote unquote, 10%, because it's a proportionate giving. You know, a millionaire will say, somebody who's making will say $10,000 a week, just for a number. Uh, and, and he gives his 10% uh, on that. So he's making 10,000, he gives $1,000 a week, right? But he's got $9,000 to live on that week. Then you have, uh, a guy like my dad who drove a truck and, um, you know, he made a few hundred dollars at that time because daddy retired a long time ago. So we'll say my dad's making um, a thousand just for today's figures, maybe. I don't even know what, what, what the going rate for a truck driver is now with my dad's experience, but so we'll say a thousand. Daddy gives a hundred dollars. My dad was a tither. He gives a hundred dollars out of his thousand. That hundred dollars proportionately is a lot more than that thousand the other guy gave. And so if you look only at the numbers, you're thinking, man, that guy's generous. When in fact, no, my dad gave up more of his life in his hundred than that guy gave mm. in his thousand. So you give proportionately, you know, because a man who's making 10,000 a week could probably afford to give more than yeah. that. Probably, maybe not, probably could. And so we learned that a long time ago. And so uh, I think you're, you're missing out on some real good life lessons when money becomes so important to you that you don't want to give any of it right. away to anybody. Start. Yeah, and, when you hold on and to that it like that. impacts the marriage, right? I mean, it impacts yeah. intimacy. It impacts a lot of it different things. It impacts your children the most. Mm -hmm. Yes. The wife and you are probably in agreement, but the kids are watching. And the kids see that daddy has his new whatever, our mama's got her new whatever. And they see they're not generous to God. And so they grow up not generous to God. So generosity is something you learn. It's something from example. And uh, I think that, yes, I think it's a big mistake when a father is complaining about not having enough or when he says to the kids, oh, we... I really would have liked to, but I can't because I don't have. I think you're making a mistake. Um, I love Marie's attitude. I really do. She's the one who says, look what God gave to us. Mm. You know, and, and, and though she'd know that sometimes when we were not doing very well, that I felt like a failure, like I wasn't giving to the kids what I needed to. She knew that. But she never made them think that. I was the one who thought, I wish I could. I wish I could. I can't. I wish I could. And my children still remember, and, and the older ones think that we were poor because I said, I just can't afford that, kid. So I made a mistake in the way I communicated. Instead of saying, oh, that'd be great, but guess what we can do? And like Maria's, that's how she does it. You know, that? yeah, that'd be fun sometime. But you know what we can do right now? That's Marie. And she was the one who helped the children where I was the failure in my own heart until God started teaching me lessons about uh, otherwise, you know. Um, so, yeah, an attitude of gratitude, mm -hmm. they used to say, yeah. and of, of faith and learning 
I don't, I really don't need that. Mm-hmm. You have to know the difference between wants and actual yeah, needs. That's true. It's so true. Yeah. And so we we came to that place. So my son David, see, I, I I'm an empty. Marie and I are empty nesters now, John. Uh, we don't have to spend as much of our income on food and clothing for the children. So that leaves us with what is called discretionary cash. So we have extra, you know. But my son David said to me a while back now, Dad, he said, if you wanted now, you could have any car you want because he knows I like cars. <laughs> I'm a car guy and in terms of admiration. Oh, that's a beautiful car. So he says to me, Dad, you can, he did it. He said it more than once. You could have any car you want, Dad. And I say, I, I, I have the car I want, son. You know, I have the car I want. But, Dad, you could. I know, honey. <laughs> I know what I could afford. Right. But I have what I want. Because my wants are more important in terms of satisfaction than what I wish I had or I even could afford. Because if I went out and and spent money on on a nice car and all of that, because I do, like I said, I do like classic cars. I do like certain cars that I think are works of art. The way some people like to look at paintings, I admire a beautiful a beautiful uh, design in an automobile. That's my artwork. My kids know that. But why would I, I I've told them, why would I go out and purchase something that makes me nervous to even drive. <laughs> Why would I do that? You park a mile away exactly. from it, right? Exactly. <laughs> I don't want to be that guy who parks and puts carts around the car to make sure somebody... Did. I don't want to be that guy. So I I, I, I drive what I'm comfortable with. I, I, Marie's always trying to get me to buy shoes and things because I, 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 I'm satisfied wearing shoes until they wear out. I'm just that guy. Marie's the one who wants the daddy. She'll say, you need to get a pair of shoes, you know. And every once in a while, I do get them. Or she'll come on Christmas <laughs> or my birthday, and I get a new pair of shoes. <laughs> and then I just put it in my room, and I don't wear them. <laughs> you know, that's just me. I think we talked about that. My wife tried to throw out an old sweatshirt, and I dug it out and kept it. Yeah, you know, good. it's my favorite sweatshirt. You know, yeah. it's the sweatshirt I would it like to. It fits you. It fits right. Hey, as long as it as fits, as it's it good, fits. right? It might look like chorizo in it, but it's fits, right? <laughs> your, your face is all red. Would you both say that then tithing, and not saying this is not presumptuously, but that tithing has direct correlation with faith, obviously, but happiness and joy in the marriage. Yes. Yes. Because what does it do for a couple when a couple says, Lord, this is yours first? Well, you're acting together in faith. You're in agreement in faith. You're on the same page with the Lord. And that brings unity of heart. And, and, and when God blesses you in a uh, surprising way, you both rejoice over that. Mm-hmm. You know, you both say, look what God did. Mm-hmm. Which we've so done true. more than once. <laughs> look what he did. Look what he did. He provided for us, you know. God has a way of caring for us. John, let me share a little story with you. I just came, it just came to mind. I mentioned that Marie and I uh, had, we, you know, we got married. We didn't have, we didn't go on vacations, you know. And when we did, they were overnighters. We would take the children. We'd get them up at like, what, three or four in the morning, put them in the back seat of the car, wrap them up in blankets, and we'd drive overnight to wherever it was we were going to go because it saved us one night of hotel, hotel. Yeah. you know, so we would do that. And then we'd come home the same way. The babies would be asleep in the back, wrapped up and secure and safe and all of that. So, um, I, I, Marie had been to, uh, Hawaii once when she was a younger young lady, I had never been. And in my, in my life, that was the one place at this time that I really wished I could go, but no, we, you know, I got small children. I can't afford to go in Hawaii to fly over there, get a hotel. I, 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 can't, I can't do that. But we had a couple in our church who loved us at that time. And uh, one day they came up to us and they said to us, um, hey, we want to give you a gift. We want you to go with us someplace. And they were dear to us. And, and I said, oh, really? And where is that? We want to take you to Hawaii. Wow. And I said, because I'd always wanted to go to Hawaii. And I said, well, we talked about it. Can we? I don't like to receive gifts from people. I don't, as you may know, I don't like to receive gifts from people. And so I said, 
can we? What do you think, baby? Because my suspicious nature has to be overridden by Marie's simple loving faith sometimes because I'm the person who protects myself from hurt if I can. What do you think, baby? She says, no, we love these. They love us. So we received their gift. And so they actually, the way we went to Hawaii the very first time was uh, a couple in our church at that time who just out of the goodness of their heart um, paid for us to fly to Honolulu. I think it was Honolulu. I think so. Honolulu. Yeah. Yeah, and we got, a, they put us in a little kind of condo timeshare kind mm -hmm. of thing. And that's how God, that's how God has taken care of us, you know? And uh, we didn't ask for it. I didn't, I didn't ever stand up in front of the church saying, I wish. It's another story. Uh, back in 1983, my Anna was just a few months old. Mm -hmm. And um, I had an opportunity to go to Israel. I, I believe that every pastor, if you can, should go at least once. And so I had a small fellowship and I said to, to the church, I said, you know what? I'm gonna go to Israel. Uh, it cost at that time $1,050. <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> $1,050. We got a, a pastor's, it was a pastor's group. My, my pastor, Chuck, asked us to go with him. So I said um, to Marie, I said, I'm, I, I think I ought to go. She said, you have an opportunity. She doesn't hold me back from what the Lord gives me opportunity to do. She said, you want to go? So I was talking to a Wednesday night Bible study. Again, our church was fairly new. And we only had 60 people in my midweek. And I, and I just honestly, because I've always been honest with my church, they, they actually weren't judgmental. Today's church is a bit different. The earlier church loved me, and I knew they did. So I could speak to them that way in an honest way. I said, you know, I, I really feel, I want you guys to know I'm going to go to Israel. I was given an opportunity. I said, but, and I, I was just being real. I said, but, you know, the only time I've been away from Marie is when she's given birth to our babies. She's always, I'm always with her. She's always with me. And I said, to be honest with you, the idea of being away from her, I just, mm, but I really feel that I should go. John is God is my witness. Was it two weeks later or so? Mm -hmm. Somebody walks up to me and hands me an envelope and says this to me. They said, I want you to know that that little group of people put together an offering and we're paying Marie's way to go. And they gave us $200 spending money, oh, wow. you know? And God is always, always taking care of us, John. He always has. And That's our amazing. people were touched by his spirit to mm -hmm. love us enough to send my girl with me. Mm -hmm. And Anna. Anna, and Anna came with She me. was three months old. Three months old. Her first time to Israel. So would you say that we can't afford not to tithe? I really believe, and that that's a phrase we use, isn't it? You really can't afford not to give. I, I really, I think when you clarify what that means, I think that you learn some tremendous lessons of the way God supplies all my need according to his riches in Christ. You learn those things. My God is able to supply. I know he is able because if I did not trust him to supply the needs of my small family, which were very small, how could I trust him to supply the needs for this fellowship today? How could I? Because people don't realize how much money a church like ours pays just for rent. You know, how much do we pay on, how much do we pay per month mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on on a, a monthly payment for 13 acres and 100,000 square feet of building? How much do we pay for 50 staff members? H how much? They don't realize that. And I've told the churches, you have a house payment, so do I. But I also have a church payment. I also have a church payment and insurance payments and all the other things. So if I didn't believe that the Lord took care of us in the small things, how could I trust him to take care of us in the larger? And so he has, and I, I brag on my God, he is able. And John, you've known me a long time and really a long time. Um, you've never seen me beg. You've never seen me complain out there or Ever. whine or Never. cry. I don't do that. 
You know why? You know, sometimes I feel I need to say, people, it'd be important for you to give because we do have payments. And in the midst of all of these things, payments don't stop. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. But my God has always touched the hearts of people and they're generous beyond their tithe. They're generous in their offering, in their gifts and all. And so, yes, you're, you're, you're losing on the opportunity of seeing God show himself to be the provider, the God who, the God who sees and the God who will provide. You're, uh, you're, you're losing out on the opportunity to see him like that. And also blessing the marriage Absolutely. in a sense that, uh, I mean, just think, just hearing from your guys' experiences, the blessings, praising the Lord together because he provided. And that unity together, praising the Lord, I mean, that's bringing glory and honor to his name because you both are experiencing the power and faithfulness together. of our Lord. Together. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because he's providing for us. Mm -hmm. Yes. He always does. You know, again, Marie and I have a common purse. All the blessings that come, come to us. Mm -hmm. They come to us. If she's blessed in a way, it's a blessing to me. If I'm blessed in a way, it's a blessing to mm -hmm. her. And that's how it works. That's how it right. works. You know, we're talking, as you're talking about, uh, it, it's it's a common purse. Uh, one of the things I have written down here is combine it. Because since there is a union between husband and wife, I, I believe that it's essential that couples combined accounts and all their financial items. I think there's a danger and it's difficult to function financially and as one when things are separate accounts are separate um, what is it that you would say to those or maybe we can use it on a personal personal application is it better to combine it's for us versus that's yours i make the money i'm the money winner i do what i <clears throat> what i want i earn it so i spend it and and there is this kind of this this just separate accounts type of mentality. You know, some people do very well on separate accounts when it comes to things like uh, what we used to call an allowance. You know, I, honey, I'm going to have X amount of dollars this week so I can buy some coffee for myself and I'm on the job or, you know, maybe buy lunch once every couple of days or whatever, you know, that's an agreement made between two people. So, mm -hmm. so if I said, honey, you know, let's put out some, because I'm going to do this, she'd go, that's fine. You know, or if she was to do that. And I think there are some people who do that. I think where you run into danger is when you begin to say, I worked for this, that's my money. And then that attitude of I'm letting you in on some of what I've done, but I'm making more than you. Therefore, I should really have the priority in the expenditures. That, And there are some who do that. And then there are others who hide things that they're buying and don't even tell <laughs> the husband or the wife, you know, and... Uh, and that, that's where real problems come into the church, and so, mm -hmm. or rather the house. And so for Marie and me, yeah, we use the concept of a, of a, of a common, common purse. It's ours. Mm -hmm. But we also talk about what we spend. Mm -hmm. You know, there's communication in that. Mm -hmm. Like, because Marie can tell you this, you know, uh, again, I just, we, we have savings. We make sure that, that that rainy day fund does exist for us. And so... Um, She'll, she, we'll be together and perhaps she'll see something she would like to have. I know that we can afford it, you know, and it wouldn't be irresponsible for me to buy something that I shouldn't. So if I see that she likes something, because I know where our finances are by and large, and she says, oh, those are so nice. I will say to her, maybe if you want that, I know you can, you can mm -hmm. have it if you want it. And I leave that in her, mm -hmm. in her court. So if she says, nah, I really don't, I just think it's pretty, then I say, that's fine. But she has that freedom because I know our general funds. I know what we can and cannot spend. Or if I'm walking and I say, I like that, she'll say, you know, honey, you can get it. And so that leaves it in my, in my uh, decision. It leaves it with me. And I, uh, I really don't need that. You can have it if you want. You know you can. Nah, I don't need that. Or I'll say, you know, you're right. I'd I, I'd like to have another shirt. You know, it'd be good. I can wear it on Sunday or Wednesday or whatever. That's kind of how we do it. So it's full disclosure. It's an amount that we're making. And and say Marie, because Marie provided the income for us, 
in the early days because I, again, I didn't make anything and she was working in supply and I never felt uh, that I'm not a man, mm -hmm. you know, I can't. No, I knew it was a season in our marriage and, and that one day the Lord was going to bless me enough to be able to care for my family the way I felt I should, and he did. Um, so I've never had that in my mind. It just has never been part of us where I would worry. But the key is going to be responsibility, being responsible in your spending and communication about it. You need to be in agreement. It's a person who goes out and buys himself a pair of shoes and then kind of hides it somewhere in the closet and only wears it at certain times that this person doesn't even know. And then three months later, that person says, oh, those shoes, oh, these are old. I've had them for months, you know, that kind <laughs> right, of thing. Right, right. Because right. eventually that comes out. And then there's your problem. Look, baby, you knew that we didn't have the money for that. How come, and that's when the, the, the arguments come, and that's where the, well, I'm tired of wearing the same shoes, that kind of argument. Hmm. And that really ties into when we're talking about, say, in financial intimacy, because in intimacy in a marriage, whether it's like we mentioned, physical, emotional, spiritual, there's a we involved instead oh, of an I. I. Mm -hmm. And when there, when there's communication, when there is uh, openness, and there is uh, just a uh, an expectation to share, because in intimacy, in any level we speak about, it's not about me; it's about mm -hmm. us. It's always mm -hmm. us. And uh, and you can see that even in the finances, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter who earns it, because I know some couples think that well, since you know uh, whoever earns the money, it dictates how it's spent, and now it's become an I instead of a we. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. That's you know, dangerous. That's dangerous. Uh, then that carries over into the marriage itself. I think that that's actually a reflection of the marriage itself. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's carrying over at all. I think it is what it is. Mm -hmm. It's just an exposing that that's because true. you didn't have you didn't have an agreement. You didn't realize some basic things. Yeah, money money is uh, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. You know, and money separates even the chiefest of friends, and and that can include a husband and a wife. Wow. And so we have to be very careful, realizing that it's a tool. It's something that can be used, but it's got to be responsibly used, and it has to be monitored, and it has to be uh, there has to be an awareness that everything that's in my hand has been given to me by God, so I have responsibilities to Him first, because He, he says in the Book of Deuteronomy, chapter I think it's chapter five, uh, that He gives us chapter eight He gives us power to become rich. He says it there, not as if we're all going to be rich, quote unquote. But the point he's making is he's saying, I don't want you to get to the point where you say, I, I attained all of this on my own strength, by my own wisdom and abilities. You need to remember, I'm the one who gives you the ability to have that. And so, you know, if uh, it's Bezos, the richest man in the world. Hey, if you're listening right now. <laughs> 10% would work you fine, know, right? I wouldn't mind $16.7 <laughs> billion. <dollars. laughs> well, you know, it's interesting because uh, when we have that I uh, mentality versus we, not understanding it's the Lord that has given us everything. And it's like when, and I know you guys have experienced, my kids are probably too young to do this, but you guys give them their money, the money to buy you guys gifts. Yeah, We think about it's was ultimately your money and you know with our with the money that we have now same concept mm -hmm. you know it's god's money who's given it to us mm -hmm. to be stewards over my children are givers and what i did with them is when they were small we had the baby jars for the baby food and i'm talking about you know when you still got kids that are small enough to have that which would have been anna you know we still were giving her baby food but we kept the jars and i would give them a, a, a dollar in dimes the, the older kids, um, and uh, and I would take the 10 dimes out and spread it out, and I'd say, this jar is yours, and this jar is for Jesus. Um, give Jesus what you think he should have. And I'd say, let's begin with one dime. Wow. And they would take the dime, and they would put it in there. And as, as babies, young kids, you know, I'd say, okay, these nine are yours, and they'd see all of those, and then the one for Jesus... And they would say, I should give him more than that one. And that's how I taught them to be generous. And uh, you know my kids, and they, all, all four of them mm -hmm. are generous. You know, little David, is, to a fault, is generous. <laughs> right. 
very really generous. Is, but my Corinne is yes. my kids All of them are very generous. generous. They're very yeah. generous. How'd they learn that? How'd they learn that? They learned that because we taught them that generosity is a virtue and trusting God is a virtue. And I taught them about giving because they knew daddy was supplying those dimes. So they thought daddy had an unlimited amount of dimes. <laughs> they did. But that taught them that their heavenly father has funds that he makes available to them too. And it was out of my hand that they had a dime, but I had my dimes out of his hand. And that's how my children learned. You can teach your kids generosity, not just in object lessons, but as they watch you, when you go with people, which our kids have seen, and then you say, let me take care of the bill for you. I just, it's our gift to you. And they see you do that. And, or, or mama buys her friend a cup of coffee and the kids are with, and hmm, that's a good thing. So that's how it happens, mm -hmm. you know, and you explain to them, our God has supplied. Oh, I won't spend money I don't have, but our God has supplied. And generosity is a good thing, babies. And we taught our kids that. And our children, I'm, I'm blessed to say this, are, are very wise with their finances and generous. Well, there's that proverb, the generous soul, the generous soul shall be made rich. He who waters, he who, he who waters uh, shall himself, be himself, right, be watered. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys so much of giving us practical. I mean, we had so much more to talk about, but I really appreciate where it led to because very practical things that uh, we married couples have learned just from what you guys have shared in your experience. So thank you guys so much. Of course. Really appreciate it. Thanks again for tuning in. Let's Talk Marriage is a ministry of Calvary Chapel, Chino Valley. If you've enjoyed this video, then please like and share it. We will see you again next week on another episode of Let's Talk Marriage.